Thank you. I'm glad you took her food back. <laughs> That's a petty sh This man really must be a man of God because the amount of times he has escaped death narrowly. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXX Chic, and we are back with another reaction to The Walking Dead, The Ones Who Live. We're now on to episode five, which is called Become. So yeah, I don't know about y'all, but I definitely, it took me a few days to decompress from the last episode. It was so good, it was so good. I ranted and raved about it in my review. If you have not checked that out, please do. But yeah, it was phenomenal. Phenomenal acting, phenomenal writing. Phenomenal execution. All of it was great. It was absolutely an Emmy contender and a Golden Globe contender, in my opinion. I really, really, really hope that Andy and Denai get considered. I hope they're submitting anyways. I know that uh, fantasy is not the genre that typically does well at these shows, but I really do hope that they get considered because this was masterful. And I do think it was just something that everybody could appreciate and learn from as far as really, really good filmmaking. But outside of all that, basically we had Rick and Michonne finally hash things out. They needed to get away from the CRM. They needed to get away from the Kool-Aid that Rick was being constantly uh, exposed to and really have those raw conversations about what's going on, where Rick's mind is, what he's been through since she, since he's been gone. And Michonne, conversely, getting through to Rick that, you know, what like what's going on, like getting through all of that to find out what the real crux of the reasoning was behind Rick trying to push her away and stay in this place that is his prison effectively. So we had some heart-wrenching conversations. It was very hard to see Richard acting that way, but in the end, as usual, as usual, his queen, his wife recognized that she had to get through all these walls he built up to get to the truth. And when she did, she was able to really talk to the real Rick and gently coax him out from behind that wall and make him realize that living a life that's not living is not worth living, if that makes sense. <laughs> So anyway, they got it together and they had to get out of there because the building was about to go down because the CRM was destroying all the evidence that they existed. And they're on the road again. They are heading out. We ended a Walking Dead episode on a happy note. I mean, shock, right? But anyhow, they're on the road and they think that they're going to be able to get back home. But obviously, us in the fandom, we are all anxious because this is Walking Dead. We know better, right? We know nothing goes that smoothly. There still is the issue of Jadis back at the CRM, even though that plane is gone and now the building is gone. Yeah, I just, Jadis knows these two and I just don't believe that she's going to think that they're gone, especially because both of them, no body, no nothing. She's definitely going to either go to Alexandria and look for them or she's going to just continue to see like, you know, just, you know, you know, Jada, she's going to feel like she needs to just make extra sure. So I do hope that these two are going to be careful in this, uh, these days to come. And yeah, inevitably there's going to be some challenges because looking at the episode description, there's going to be some challenges. So anyway, enough talking for me. I am very excited to get into the episode. Whew. I think I'm ready. All right. So we're going to do that. But just before I do, if you'd like to be notified of when I do uploads for this particular show or anything else you might be watching of mine, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. So you will be notified and please keep those comments and all that stuff coming. You guys have been so good. It's so nice to be able to fangirl over this show and this couple again with like-minded people. So please keep it coming. I love it. All right. That out of the way, let's get into the episode right now. I don't recognize these shoes. Game? Oh my God. That is not a face I expected. And why is he so far away from the Commonwealth? But this might be good though. Like if he goes back to the Commonwealth, like, yo, there's helicopters. Cause I think they're the only ones who are out of the loop, right? Cause in Fear the Walking Dead, they know the CRM exists. And obviously World Beyond, they know exists. So I think they're the only group that doesn't know. And yeah, we definitely need the Commonwealth to be aware of the fact that there is a group out there with helicopters because they probably think they're the most advanced group right now. <laughs> He's kissing her hand again. This is what we wanted, like episode one. Let's be real. <laughs> the Rashonas were hoping we got this episode one. Uh, I see what they're doing though. All this bright lighting and smiling and happy music in the beginning. We're going to have some real bullet later. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Pretty. Not the knife stuck. The walkers providing weapons, food falling from the sky. God is blessing them. There's no way that's not flat. Mm, he 
he's just trying to like keep those memories alive now. That means so much more. He's just like, I just need to remember my boy. Ugh, snow removal happening right now outside my house. In March, I'm just, oh. Bet you there's no Michonne on that license plate. Never did like those. Right, they're so exclusionary. No Michonne's. Huh? It Not even once. But same here, sis, same. Always just wanted one. Junior. <laughs> is, is this a terrible gift to bring to RJ? I mean, it's the best we can do in an apocalypse. No one has ever once called him Junior. I mean, it's from his daddy. He'd take it. You're bringing yourself back. It's more than enough. A brave man, huh? Mm -hmm. You are. Mm -hmm. More than ever. Exactly. What'd he get? Close. Oh, she used to have an M necklace. Do you guys remember she used to have an M Richard. Why is he so sweet? I got you something. Toothpaste. Baking soda. Oh, not the, not the first time they ever kissed. I don't, we didn't forget. I was in love with my son's best friend. I didn't know what to do. Then you asked for that. Toothpaste, wow. I was damned if I wasn't gonna find something. Period. I was in love with my son's best friend. Can we just, can we just sit on that you for a minute? You found your moment. Oh, hell yes, he did. Is this one? Could be. You tell me. Right? Like, let's not waste time, mister. Ah, <laughs> oh, we waited so long. I'm sorry. Looks like we found a place to stay for the night. Listen, Michelle's like, respectfully, I'm not as young as I used to be, so I require a bed. <laughs> This going up against countertops and stuff is real cute, but you know, a girls get some sciatica and stuff. We don't want all that. You know, I never let go. We know, boo. I pushed you away, but I never let go. I didn't know. <sighs> yeah, there was a lot. Not people. Protect the park and the people from the people of the park and the people from the people. Why are we helping them? We don't know if they're good people. What? Is this knife? Oh God, what's wrong with him? Okay, run away. Team teamwork, baby. Calcify or something. And there's the wet ones. You got your baked and your boiled. They're kind of like pierogies. Oh, don't ruin pierogies for everybody. They look pretty hungry. I know Rick's like our food. Okay. Damn. We are great. Take it back. Yeah, we could roll this back to you just saying thanks if you want. Hell no. Y'all, they're not. Okay. Always take Like why? They weren't even flinching. That should have told you something. You should take the food back. I'd like, I'd like to roll, do the roll back. Oh yeah, you do. How do we know you won't do this to someone else? They don't. Promise us to leave people be. Hmm. You serious? <laughs> Rick's like, I don't know what we're doing. <laughs> Very hard to think right now. Well, how about you just listen? Nope. <laughs> we saved you. <laughs> Why don't you just promise and we'll believe you? Just, yeah, promise. Yeah, right, bro. Just say what they need to hear. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's... Thank you. I'm glad you took her food back. <laughs> That's some petty shit. Really? Yes. Okay. Well, I was really looking forward to that. Well, you know, you ruined it. They're so cute together, I can't. Wait till we're gone. They won't tell you again. Promise, asshole. Oh! You know what's so great about that is that Rick, circa season five, was totally that man. I don't think they'll come after us if that's what you mean. I think they figured out they're no match. Something that's stuck in my head. Protect the people from the people. Low on bullets, three walkers. We don't know. Lucky for them, someone was nearby. Lucky for them, it was us. Yeah, true. It might be strange to admit it, but that felt good. Us against the world. The way it should be. Saving it. Oh, save it. I am surprised you took back the noodles. Are you? Oh, well, that's some petty shit. That's what we do. Exactly. Put the gun on us. Oh. 
You don't get noodles for that. Right? We're not reinforcing poor behavior here. Toothpaste, booze. What are you up to, Grimes? Me? What do you mean? I'm just working with what I got. Mm-hmm. And he's like, and there's more. Come on, he's always been a gifts guy since forever. He's always been someone who likes to give gifts to show his love. And he's like, and this bed happens to be right here. <laughs> we didn't have to, we didn't have to cut away. Did, okay. Can they have a moment? Damn it. Oh, flashback. Okay, wasn't prepared for that. It's okay. I'm alone. So is she okay? was, why was she coming back three years ago? So those boots is what we saw earlier. Jadis is out here already? She's not deserving. I just wanted to see you. Mm. But you can't say to anyone. You get to go I visit people, Jadis? Okay. You left because you were being judged for things you did in your past. Oh, honey, you have no idea. Rick brought you in because he believed that people could change. He called you one of us. Hmm. My mistake wasn't trusting you. It was we'll losing about my that. faith in you. What about the ones that you made gone? How do you live with that? Prayer, amends. Yep, that's what happens in life. Clergy confidentiality. Ugh. You weren't even here, Anne. It ain't Anne. Morning, Joan, keep going. Where are you going, you little bit? We gotta go. That was hot. That was so hot. I don't know who she thought she was dealing with. Why'd you call her his wife? Well, I mean, wasn't she? Thank you! Well, not officially, but- Sir, this is not the time. Who gets married anymore? That matters anymore. One day Rick said that I should marry them. <gasps> Maybe we should do it right there on the bridge that we were building. <laughs> right in front of me was a ring. It seemed like it'd make a pretty nice wedding ring. When I thought to put it someplace that Rick would find it because I could suddenly see that someday. Okay, I forgive you. I forgive you, Gabe. <laughs> you kept it? But what happened happened. Is Gabe gonna marry them? I have spent the last year. Even if that means I have to do things that are difficult. Even. Listen, y'all. Cruel. I know some of you feel some type of way about Jadis. I'm gonna talk about it in my review, but I'm struggling with this. Knowing they're doing wrong. Exactly. It it's about survival. No, honey. It's about what comes after. Which you have no guarantees of. Survival of others. That, that you choose. Maybe it can keep the rest of the world alive too. That maybe is the problem. Food is scarce. Children are hungry. You and your people could help. Nope, we don't do that. We're saving the world by not helping people. Please know that my remorse is real. As you do cruel and difficult things. Yeah, let it go. Oh yeah, see a little too truthful, huh? Mm. Take this with you. How dare you give her Rick's ring? Where are you running, Jadis? Where are you going? Where are you going? Rick, she's not savable. Two down. I don't, okay. But I do know something about that part of yourself that you're scared of losing. Every year I come back here, I've done worse things. I know why they're done. I believe in what we're trying to do. I'm not here. No, you are. I have you. And that proves that you're still here, and it just does. That's just it, you haven't told me anything about your group. Other than that, they're people who hoard supplies while others starve. Let's put it in perspective. Do you think that the purpose of what we do is to make people suffer? Yes, it is, when you look at it, but you're choosing and not to. Are part of a group like that? Yes. I'm sorry. She didn't kill him, we know that. Just keep her in there, she's gonna bleed out. I'm glad you recognize. You kill me. They're dead. You're dying anyway. Tried, kind of. <laughs> it had to be this way, Jadis. You made it this way. I was tired. I was 
anything mm -hmm. if I didn't kill you all. Somehow, some way, you come for the CRM. Oh, you know so us I well. I the dossier to protect myself. Uh huh. Where is it? Quickly. Back and forth, Jadis. And. Man. Okay, quickly, tell us where the file is. Quickly. Go. Hmm. This man really must be a man of God because the amount of times he has escaped death narrowly. <laughs> I'll see you next year, Ed. But you don't. I found my answer. So where's the file? The dossier. Thank you. It's in my room at the Cascadia base. Thank you. It's just destroy it and go home. Thank you. The one good thing you've ever done, the Janice. CRM will bring the world back. Tell me you won't come after them. Because we are coming for them. <laughs> Rick's like, uh, look, they're they're taking out innocent people, ma'am. We can't sit back for that. He's going to get the Echelon briefing and find out everything that they do that the city doesn't know about. And we're going to help the city stop them. Because Anne? the CRM is not the answer. And they must end. It's really what it is. They're hurting innocent people, bro. And even you knew that, Anne, deep down. That? Oh, wow. She's telling you. She's not asking. I wish I died an artist. Oh, God. We really never need to see that again. This is mine. The end of my story. Yes. Dog tags. You told Gabriel you wanted to marry her. Okay, Janice, for this one thing. For this one thing, I give you props. You wanted to give it to you. How did you? It's a long story. We don't have time. Go ahead. Do what you said you would do. That's freaking right. You better. He did promise to kill you. She looked away. All right, Jadis. Good arc. Good arc. Be lying, though, if I said I don't want to see you again, because I don't. So you went out the way you should have. Thank you, ma'am. Be at peace. So wait. I've been wanting to say something. You better put this ring on. Because as far as I'm concerned, you my wife. It's a broken world. It's true. Till my last breath, I am yours. <laughs> oh, you. <laughs> Y'all. You know, I was hoping I wouldn't have to use these damn tissues, but. I could never have imagined this. This apocalypse proposal, I can't. But it could only ever have been you. <gasps> Nothing, both of them. I'm okay. I'm fine. I'm yours. Oh. Please, God, they have to be okay. They have to be okay. Oh. I mean, this is basically the wedding ceremony. Oh, sorry, Gabe. So wait, when were you with Rosita with all this? Oh no, y'all kind of broke up. But no, wait, you were still together. An A. What's happening? Are they going back? What, what, what was that fire? Okay, hold on. Oh no, I see the uniforms, so they definitely go back. Oh my gosh, I'm not ready for the preview just yet. Hold on. <laughs> I need a minute. I need a minute to process. Okay. Ooh, that was an interesting try ride of an episode. I kind of like that one. It gave us a little bit of uh, emotional decompression because the last one was definitely emotionally heavy. A lot, a lot to process. But this one was much more about them, again, trying to get home. I mean, we all knew Jadis was going to be a problem. So her showing up was not a surprise. I kind of like the way they did the parallels with showing Jadis's feet, you know, walking in a certain direction and then showing us her feet again when she was going to see Gabriel. So we kind of figured out who was there. But I think, you know, this was, <laughs> even though this is technically about Rick and Michonne, this episode was very, very much about 
Jadis and kind of her arc in all of this. And I mean, I was being extra in the episode, I know. But listen, she's never been a favorite character of mine. I know some people out there love her, but like I've always been like, you know, I don't know. She just was like, for her arc back when she first came in the show, I was like, okay, cool. She's a weird new villain. But that was it for me. I just was never that intrigued. But I get that we need to have some understanding of her. And like we've seen since episode two that she's got a weird invested interest in Rick and Michonne. Like it was so much more than, oh, they find out about you. Oh, it's gonna come back. Like, as I kept saying in the episode, you're not that important, Jadis. You really aren't. Like the CRM's got thousands of people, thousands. Like you're really not that important. Yeah, they probably would have asked a few questions, but I doubt anyone would have followed that line to go back to the time that you were briefly with another community that doesn't even know your real name. Like, come on, actually, that's not true. They did know her as Jadis too, but you get my point. Like it just, the chances were actually very slim and she had everything in her power to make it so that nobody poked around into her past where Rick was concerned. So it was definitely something else, something deeper for why she was so obsessed with Rick and Michonne, Rick in particular. But and we needed to kind of understand, we didn't, we didn't need to, I could have gone without it. But I get for the storytelling reasons, why we needed this. And so that's what we did. We delved into a bit of Jadis and why she's like this. Why has it been like this? Why does she act the way she does? And we discover that they they had her continuing to go back and see Gabriel even after she decided to go back to the CRM. It was a yearly thing. She'd meet up with him, talk. And I forgot that the two of them kind of had a thing before she left. Uh, and honestly, so much of around when Rick left that season is a blur to me. It was still so, it was so emotionally damaging. I could only watch it one time. But anyway, we see that she kept that up and that Gabriel just kept bringing up the fact that the reason she kept doing this, because she had no reason to. He believed she was gone, probably gone forever, because, you know, this is the world of The Walking Dead. Someone goes missing for over like six months. You pretty much assume it's the worst. So she had no reason to go back. There was no way that they were going to find her. But she kept coming back for a reason. And that was because she liked who she was when she was in Alexandria. Like, that's what I took from it is that Anne is the closest to what Jadis wants to be, right? She wants to be the artist, the community person, the girl who's chill and just, you know, has her people, has her man, and just kind of lives a chill life. She liked that version of herself. She liked that version of the world. But she also understood that it was never stable, right? It was never something that was like, she could just chill and know things were going to be good for the long haul because she had been, she saw her own community fall, right? Like she literally put them through the grinder. She saw Negan, who seemed like a really strong contender. She saw that be taken down by Rick and Michonne. Then she saw that Rick and Michonne were being attacked by, if it wasn't Walkers, it was something else. So I get her logic. And I've talked a lot in this, these reviews about logical brain versus real self, but her logical brain told her like this, this, always feeling safe for a moment or building something just to have it taken down and taken away. It, it's hard, it hurts. It, it sucks to keep losing people. And like she said, I'm tired of losing. I don't wanna keep losing people, losing stability, losing my hope for the future. So it, I understand the appeal of the CRM. I do, I get why it feels like a real solution. And it makes sense, the CRM is huge. It's the biggest solution that she's come across yet. They're the most organized group they've come across yet. They have the most, known technology, the most weapons. They have a city that thus far, I mean, I think we can say apocalypse time, it's been about 10 years, has remained untouched, which is absolutely a miracle. So she's like, this This could work. This might actually work. This could be something where I'll finally get to have that security that I'm looking for. But the real Jadis recognized that this was all kinds of wrong. <laughs> that the, even though the objective was right, and the CRM is not wrong in its objective. The idea that they are proposing is absolutely what every man should want, right? Security, peace, harmony, a world where people can exist without having to worry for their lives. That is what every community, every government, etc., should want. However, it's the means. The means was the issue. And that's what Jadis, the true Jadis, Anne, whoever the, we'll call the real Jadis Anne. Anne was not okay with the means. She knew the means were wrong. She knew they were morally wrong. And that's one thing as humans, like we're never taught what's morally wrong for the most part. Like there are things, we're taught about laws and stuff like that, but morally wrong is things that intrinsically feel wrong to us as humans. And there's been a lot of studies that have proven that as humans, we know that certain things are just intrinsically wrong, like taking life, for example. There's a reason why when someone takes a life, whether it's in self-defense, whether it's because they're in the military and they've been trained that that's what they're supposed to do, whatever the case may be, there's trauma that is associated with that as humans. We usually do not recover well from that. The people who are okay with that, they usually don't end up very well. They end up in prisons or in psychiatric, 
you know, hospitals because they're not okay. It's not normal for that to happen, right? It's something that's against our moral code that we all are born with. So Jadis knew that despite the fact that the vision itself was good, the means that the CRM is taking to do so is wrong. And it goes against all the tenets that America is supposed to be about of a country of freedom. So she knows this, but she's trying to tell herself that the ends justify the means. And listen, we've all been there. I think all of us to an extent have sometimes done things that we're like, this doesn't feel like I should be doing it, but you know, but this is the end result. So maybe it's worth it, but it's never, it never is. It never is. If it feels wrong in here, it's not the right answer. It's not the right answer. So anyways, that's what she was struggling with. And her meetups with Gabriel year after year was basically that part of herself. And from inside the cage that Jadis had put her in, trying to reach out and get that humanity back, trying to like tell herself, I, I'm not really the monster that I have, that I think I am, am I? Am I really this person, right? Anne would come out there and get that reassurance from Gabriel every year. Cause that's basically what he was doing was like, no, like you're not that, you're not a monster. You're not, you know, he was giving her all the things she kind of needed to hear and that Anne needed to hear to not completely die inside. And he validly made that point of the reason you keep coming back here is because Anne is still in there. If she wasn't, you would have ended this either taking me out or you just would have stopped coming, but she's still in there and you, she still needs to be fed and that's why you keep coming here. And so of course, you know, we hear that Jadis is speaking the speak and it shows like, I've seen a lot of reactors refer to the CRM as a cult and that's exactly what they are because that's exactly it. Like the logical part of the brain is so cultified in, J in Jadis, but her real self is still in there telling her like, girl, uh-uh, like this is not it. Like this is not the truth. And so we see her, she, you know, logical Jadis is spouting all the cult speak to Gabriel every time they meet like, oh, this is who I am. This is what I have to do, blah, blah, blah. But real Anne is the person who's still asking about how people are doing in the community, who wants to know how, how Gabriel's doing, who's apologizing sincerely for the fact that when they were going through a rough time, she couldn't provide resources for them just to help them survive, right? Even that is when, you know, that's when Gabriel was like, what kind of community are you in that has enough resources for you to be flying out here all chill and you can't even spare some food? Food? Not even weapons, we just want food and you can't give us food or medicine, right? So it's like, you have to think what kind of a community that's trying to better the world is hoarding resources and keeping people from it. And again, she already, she didn't say it directly, but she definitely inferred to Gabriel that they were doing far worse, which we as an audience already know, they were wiping out whole communities, right? And that's really where I think the Jadis began to understand that, okay, this, this is a, this place is messed up. This place is dark. However, as I said, her desire, all of this boils down to her desire, as she said in her final speech of her desire to not lose anymore. She felt like if I have to lose some of my humanity, as she put it, if I have to lose my humanity to save humanity, then I think it's worth it. But even saying that out loud to me is ludicrous. <laughs> even hearing that out loud, it's like, do you, did you hear what you just said? How can you save humanity by losing your humanity? Those two things that doesn't make that, that math doesn't math. That's a sum of zero. <laughs> if you take one and then you minus one, you have zero. There's nothing, there's no humanity. So what do you mean, <laughs> right? So anyways, poor Jadis, you know, I, I get it. Like everything we do as humans, you know, we're, we're pretty simplistic creatures. We do things to either increase our joy or reduce or eliminate pain. Jadis is over here. She was trying to reduce her pain. And that's why she put herself through this. That's why she tried to believe the Kool-Aid, tried to tell herself. And we saw Rick doing this in, in episode one, in episode two, in episode three, right up until episode four, we saw Rick doing this. The logical mind saying, this all makes sense. Yeah, I can grasp onto the good of this really terrible situation because you know, it's, it's this long-term goal is worth it, but it's not. Not if the real you has to die. If your humanity has to die to make this happen, it's, it's never worth it. That's not a future that's worth building towards. It never is. And any country that's ever tried to do that has inevitably failed because humanity always wins out. It always does in some way, shape or form. But anyway, so it was good to understand a little bit more about that. I know some people in my comments were saying that Jadis is a character that's often misunderstood because of the outward actions that we see. And Listen, I always go in on her just because I've, like I said, she's never been a favorite of mine, but of course, as a, as a character in writing wise, of course I knew there was more to her. Like I, I never liked two dimensional villains or one dimensional villains, right? It's never just her, I'm evil because there's always a reasoning behind it. And we finally have Jadis's. And again, I didn't think she was purely evil, but I'm also someone where I'm going to call people out for their actions. I expect to be accountable for my actions even if I had a reasoning behind it, like if my actions are hurting people, they're hurting people, period. And Jadis hurt a lot of people. She took lives. She did terrible things and she knew it too. So it's kind of like, I'm not gonna just sit there and sugarcoat that 
because really what in the end of our lives, what makes what people look at as the sum of who we are is not our intentions. It's going to be our actions because that's what we can see from the outside. I don't know what Jadis' intentions are if she doesn't tell me. I don't know what a person's intentions. If someone comes up and stabs me in the street and walks away, am I going to be like, I wonder if he intended to do that? Or we're going to be like, he stabbed me, right? <laughs> that's the way we work. So that's the reason why for me, I'm like, I, I hear what Jadis is saying. I get it. But the fact that she kept choosing to do the wrong thing is in of itself speaking to the kind of person she was. She was really willing to ride this out to the bitter end. And I mean, it's sad, like she had to die. Like, I feel like that's why she got to the point where she had to die because she wasn't willing to make that, that choice to advocate for Anne. She kept, like she said, I keep knowing that when she told Gabe, I keep knowing these things are wrong, but I just go harder in the paint to doing those wrong things because I'm hoping that this will die at some point, right? Right down to where she was about to kill Gabe. She couldn't do it, thankfully, but... You get my point. Like her actions were telling me that she was gonna just keep going. She was, event Anne was gonna die at some point. At some point, Anne would die. If you keep killing that part of your conscience, at some point it's gonna stop coming back. And that's the road she was taking. So that's why I said she had to go. Like, I'm not sad about her leaving because she really wasn't gonna give up. And I think the reason why in the end that she was so fixated on Rick and Michonne is because Rick and Michonne are what she wants. That's what Anne wanted. Rick and Michonne, stoked the fire in Anne, right? She was sitting there doing her best to just put her head into the work and into the world of the CRM. But when Rick came there, when Rick started to, his escape attempts, all of that, I'm sure all those escape attempts is when she was going back and seeing Gabriel. And then when Michonne came back, she remembered seeing those two together. She saw for herself what Rick and Michonne could do. And I feel like that inspirational feeling that Anne felt just came flooding back and it scared her. That's what scared her. And that's why she kept saying, you two together are unstoppable. You're what I wish, you're what Anne wishes I could be, but I'm not. So I'm gonna try to punish you for it. I'm gonna try to get you out of here so I can try to keep squishing Anne down. So anyway, that's where we were at. That's how it got to this point. And it's sad. I mean, yeah, obviously it would have been nice if she could have found a way to break through it or instead say, you know what, let me help you, Rick and Michonne. But she wasn't there. She had gone, she'd made her choice. She'd made her choice and unfortunately death was the only way. So anyway, we got the understanding though. And I mean, I think it was good that we got that understanding. Pollyanna deserves it. I mean, she's the only recurring character that's managed to be on not one, but three versions of this show. So yeah, I know a lot of people did like her character. So for those of you out there who really like her, I do my condolences to you. I know it's not gonna be fun not to see her again, but I feel like this is the logical conclusion. I don't think there's any more. If she wasn't gonna help Rick and Michonne, there was no reason for her to continue, if that makes sense. And I'm glad they didn't turn her into some larger, long-standing villain for Rick and Michonne, honestly. I feel like this is probably the kindest way that she could have gone. And she ended up being the person to facilitate the Michonne official marriage. <laughs> she gave him that ring, which we're gonna get to the ring. But yes, for that reason, as I said, I'm like almost always forgiven for that. Which <laughs> I was always forgiven for that, Jadis, because you gave that ring. You at least did that. The fact that she kept it with her, though, that's another thing. That she kept this ring that had nothing to do with her directly when you think about it, but it was what the ring represented, right? Gabriel said this ring represents not only the love that Rick had for this woman, but the future that he saw of being able to have this future, build a new future happily with his family and the people that he cared about. That's what this ring represents. And that's why Gabe held onto it all those years is because of the hope it represented and the love, the strong, beautiful bond of love that it represented. And then he gave it to Jadis and she held onto it all these years. She had no reason to take that, but that's really why that investment, like I said, back in episode two, like, what is your thing? That was why Jadis was so obsessed with those two is because of the hope they represented that she kept in this ring all this time with her to this point. She didn't even have to take it with her going after them. She could have left it at her base. Yeah, so anyway, Jadis, thank you. Good arc, really good that we got some background on her. But like I said, she had to go. I feel like this was best for her because she was never, that inner conflict was tearing her up anyway. So like she said at the end, this is her piece and I'm glad she got her piece. And you know, Rick, Rick got to be the one, even though I know Michonne was itching. <laughs> Rick got to be the one, but I mean, I, at that point, obviously neither Rick or Michonne were happy about it because they saw that like Rick, she was going through her own inner battle and sadly Jadis didn't have a Michonne to pull her out of it. Maybe it could have been Gabriel. It actually probably could have been. If she had Gabriel with her, I think he would have pulled her out of it, but 
it is what it is. Not everyone's lucky enough to have their own Michonne and their own Rick to pull them out of the depths. So that was that really great part of the episode. Outside of that, believe it or not, not as much about Rick and Michonne, but love their little, you know, their little road trip antics that we got. I really like that they showed how things were kind of just going so well for them, you know, finding food, finding weapons, you know, finding a place to stay that was safe relatively. And oh my gosh, just Rick, someone's put online that Rick's, one of Rick's love languages is um, gift giving. So, you know, I'm sure most of you know about the whole five love languages thing. And I think personally for Rick, it's definitely physical touch, uh, but also he is a uh, acts of service person, right? And he likes to uh, also do gifts, right? Like, and again, I feel like the gifts kind of wrap into acts of service in my opinion, but the fact that he saw that and he saw the junior tag and he was like, do you think RJ would want this? And I'm like, Michelle, just let him get the damn tag. <laughs> but I get it. She's like, no one calls him junior. <laughs> <laughs> no one does. But anyway, the fact that he was thinking of RJ and that's the Rick we know. He's always thinking about his family. He's always thinking about what he can do for them. But anyways, she tells him, you know, you're enough, babe. Like you coming home and him meeting you for the first time will be more than enough than anything you could possibly bring him. But then he sees the, he sees the, the necklace. And remember, if y'all remember from way back in the early seasons of The Walking Dead, Michonne had an M necklace that she wore. I don't even know what happened to it. I don't know if they ever actually talked about how she lost it. But anyway, she had the M necklace. And the fact that Rick remembered that and he, you know, created a new one. And then got her, you know, getting her the wine and all the, and like, just love how she's like, why are you being like, why are you giving me all these things? And he's just like, look, I'm working with what I got. <laughs> but I do like that he's basically showing that like, he knows, he knows he hurt her. You know, I think he knew back then, but now that he's fully kind of away from the fog of the CRM, it's really hitting him that he hurt her a lot with the way he acted when she first came. And of course, as I said in the last review, I don't think he ever meaningfully meant or maliciously meant to hurt her, but he just thought I got to push her away from my protection. But in doing that, he hurt her. And I think, again, in his mind, he just thinks that Michonne is so strong and she is that she could take it. But when she last episode told him, like, you're hurting me, like what you're doing is actually hurting me. That broke him, right? Yeah, that's never what, that was never his intention. So I can see him like, he's just trying to make up, right? He's like, I'm trying to show you that I am so sorry. Like, and even saying like, even though I denied everything, I never let go of what we had. I never let go of my love for you. Never let go of the belief that what we had was real, right? Like just kind of letting her know that despite all the stuff that Podrick said last episode, you know, just know that that's the real me has always been in there just under a lot of stuff. And she was like, I didn't, I didn't really know what was going on, but I, I do now, right? So I just love that he's just continuing to try to shower her with that love and and make it, because that is how Rick is. As Michonne said last episode, the way that Rick loves is by showing, like he he's someone who loves to shower the people he loves with affection, um, showing them through acts of service, as I said, touching on them, hugging them. Like he's just someone who loves to express his love as much as possible. That fills Rick up. So yes, the fact that he got the chance to do that and he's trying to make up for that now is just adorable. And yeah, you know, des Michonne deserves it. She deserves it because that man really was just discounting all the shit that she went through right up until the end of last episode. So yeah, I think that's really, really cute. And uh, we saw two of them just kind of going through meeting those people, you know, who've been out there for God knows how long and you know, the, how they instinctively went to help them. You know, here I am the cynic being like, don't do it, we can't trust them. But they instinctively go, they try to help them. They offer them food. And then of course, even though they turn around and do something stupid, they don't kill them. They could have, but they're like, you know what? Mm, don't. <laughs> We've been where you are. This ain't the way. Don't do this to other people. If someone shows you kindness, if you can't return it, at the very least, leave them the hell alone, right? And I love that. Pe I love Petty Michonne. She said, give me back my damn noodles. She said, <laughs> she said I can't believe you. Give me back my damn noodles. Mm, you can go without a meal tonight so you can marinate on that bad behavior. I believe, I completely agree. Because Rick was like, really? You took back the noodles? I was like, yes, sir. We don't reinforce bad behavior in this house, okay? But anyways, but just seeing them together with that, and then Michonne seeing the sign talking about protect the people from the people and that kind of sitting in her head. And again, we see that that filters into later on her thinking about what this whole thing with the CRM means, right? Because she starts talking about why was Thorne so down for the cause? That makes no sense to me. Like no one goes that hard in the paint for the army. And he's like, you know, he explains the situation with Thorne. 
And so you can tell that Michonne has been thinking about this the whole episode. And then of course, when the whole thing with Jadis happens, it starts to hit her that like, especially when Jadis gives her that speech about, you know, the CRM has plans. Like it's a big, large scale plan. And I know about it now. And that's one of the reasons why I'm going hard in the paint. And we know that Thorne got that speech. And then she says that, hey, Rick, the second you got back, he was going to do it. Beal was going to call you. So like Michonne's thinking, okay, people hear whatever this echelon briefing is. And that's the the switch that takes their humanity away and makes them start doing this weird drone stuff for the military. So it starts to, the pieces start to fall together for Michonne that this is not, this is not going to work with us just going back to Alexandria. Like even if we kill her and go back and get the file, it's not going to be enough because how long will it be until they do eventually come back? Right. And I feel like I said it in the episode, last episode, she kind of started to understand the scope of what Rick was afraid of. But this episode, it really drove it home. Hearing Jadis talk like this, seeing the legs she was willing to go to, that was really the wake up call for her to recognize that, okay, this is, this is big. Like I'm starting to understand what Rick was scared of. This can't be left alone. We can't just go home and put our hands in the sand and hope that the CRM never finds us because they probably will. And if there's a chance to find out what their plan is, we need to figure it out. It was kind of that wake up call. And then we see her say to Rick, because remember when she says that whole speech for Jadis's benefit of, we can't go home, Rick. Like this doesn't end with us going home. You know, Rick later says to her like, that wasn't just for Jadis, was it? And she's like, yeah, no, I've been thinking about it. And that whole thing, she told Jadis everything. She's like, yeah, no, we're gonna go back. We're gonna find your file. I knew the file was real, by the way. I know a lot of people were thinking she was bluffing. I'm like, no, I know Jadis. She would have made that file for sure. But anyway, um, she's like, we're gonna go back. We're gonna find that file. We are gonna destroy it. But then Rick's gonna go back and he's going to get the echelon briefing. We're gonna find out exactly what they've got planned. And then we're gonna take them out because, not because of their vision, but because the CRM is not the way. And she also points out again to her that the city doesn't know what's happening. This is supposed to be the city's republic or city's army. And they have no idea that they're out here doing what they're doing because they would never ever support them, right? And that's where Beale is gonna be the linchpin coming up. But anyways, so she's like, yeah, this is why we're doing it, Jadis. It's not because we wanna destroy a hope for the future. Of course not. This is us. We're all about building a good future but this isn't the way. And you know that deep down. So, you know, Jadis kind of had that face like she was a bit disappointed, but I think deep down she knew, but I get it. Like I said, the battle was going on. But anyways, we talked about Jadis. So yeah, from that point on, Rick, you know, Michonne was dead ass to Rick. She's like, yeah, we do. We have to go back. I don't want to. But like I said, this doesn't end with us going home right now. It's not gonna be enough. They're gonna be a looming threat out there. They're gonna just keep replenishing their ranks. We have to get in there, find me the source of the rot and get rid of it. So. Yeah, they're on their way back, but of course not before, not before we get a proposal, we get the proposal. Oh my God. It was so beautiful the way he said, no matter what happens, I am yours. I am yours, which we already kind of knew, but Rick just kind of saying it out loud and cementing like, this is it. Like, I don't care what happens like this, you're it for me. And we knew that, but I love just hearing it out loud is so beautiful. Hearing this man say this to this beautiful, dark skin, Afro, Afro featured, melanated queen. Say that out loud to her. I know some people mad and that's their problem, but listen, it is beautiful. It's a beautiful thing to see and I'm glad it's in there. And I have a feeling Andy was the one who, dis who insisted on that being in the script, but I digress. But I love that. And him getting on one knee, cause you know, Rick is a traditionalist. I, I always thought that Rick, cause we, <laughs> you know, they were having that conversation, Jadis and, um, and uh, Gabriel and Gabriel's like, um, oh no, Jadis says to him, how's his wife? And J Gabriel's like, why'd you call her that? And he's like, well, isn't she? And I'm like, exactly. Like as far as Rick was concerned, that was his wife. They were married from the second they, from that fateful night with the, with the spearmint toothpaste, which again was brought up in this episode. Love that they did the shout out to 610. But anyway, <laughs> right from that moment, Rick, that was, that was his wife. That was it. Like he was locked in with Michonne from that point forward. There was no back forth. We need time. Uh-uh. He said, move yourself from the downstairs bedroom into my bedroom because we married now. That's it. So I really like that, you know, this was kind of verbalized now. Of course, Rick would have wanted to have a proper wedding, even though it wasn't necessary. Everyone assumed that they were together forever, but I love that. And getting her a ring of the fact that, oh, I just love how that all came together, that father gave, gave the ring. And if they ever do go home, I feel like we're gonna get a wedding, guys. They better, they better not have dropped this and don't give it to us. Please, Walking Dead, I know you're all about horrible endings, but 
come on now, you got to give us the, the Michonne marriage. I mean, they effectively got married at the end of the episode, right? Because, and I love that Michonne got on her knee too. Like, I know some traditionalists out there might be not, may not be happy that she got down on a knee for him, but the love that they have for each other, I think that was the perfect representation for it because Rick and Michonne have always been equals in their relationship. It's never been a, you know, it's never been, I love you more than you love me. It's never been a, you know, any kind of things like that. They both literally ride or die for each other. They love each other both more than anything, anything. Like literally it's like they're for each other here and then their kids are like right here. <laughs> and I only say that in the sense of, it's not that they don't love their kids profusely, but you know what I'm saying. Like those two, their connection to each other is crazy. So yeah, I think it was definitely an absolute beautiful representation of their type of love that Michonne also got on her knees and said, like there could have never been any other way. Like you are the only one for me too. Like this is it for both of us, right? That's some soulmate stuff right there. They were like, we are each other's it. We were brought together in this crazy ass situation because we are meant to be together. What was Rick's line? This is a broken world, but you put it back together. Let me stop before I make myself cry. But anyway, like it was just, mm, couldn't have been better. It was beautiful. And then, like I said, that was essentially a marriage. That was basically a wedding ceremony. I would love a more formal one, but if this is all we get, it was still beautiful. It was perfect for them. And just that recommitment to each other, even though like, I don't think there was ever a doubt for either of them that they were gonna be together forever, or at least for as long as they've got left. It's still nice to hear it. It's still nice to have it verbalized. Especially because for whatever reason, the show doesn't write a lot of Michonne straight up saying to Rick that she loves him, even though we know, we know by her actions and the way she treats Rick that she is obsessed with him, but it's still good to hear it out loud because Rick is a words person. So whew, that was a fantastic episode as usual. All of them so good, so well written, so good at character depiction. And I think that's just something to just bring out. This is so different than the other Walking Deads in that this show allows them to really do the character development and fleshing out and tell these stories. Walking Dead Prime did an okay job, but because the cast was always so big, they could never really deep dive and get into the nitty gritty like this show has been able to do. And that, that's because we only have really two people to focus on. Like we were able to give Jadis a whole meaningful arc in this episode that would probably have never happened in the main show. Not well anyways. So yeah, I think this was really, really good. And yeah, the next episode is gonna be, my stomach's already in knots, cause oh my God, they gotta go back and they gotta try to fake everybody out. I don't know, I feel like Beal is gonna still be a problem. Thorn, I'm not as worried about because I do think she's gonna have some radars up, but she doesn't know Rick and Michonne, not the way that Jadis did. But Thorn, or sorry, Beal, Beal looks to me like somebody who probably already knows some stuff, or he's just, I don't know, he's gonna be a problem. I know that, but I feel like that's gonna be our main villain to take down in all of this. I feel like Beale is the linchpin between the city not knowing what's going on and fueling this vision of the CRM that's currently going on but I don't think he's gonna be easy to get to or take down by any stretch. So yeah, I guess I was wondering how Michonne got her sword back. Now I know she's going back. She's gonna get that stuff for herself, thank God. So whew, one episode left guys, and I don't know what I'm gonna do because I like the show so much. I just, uh, I'm so sad at the idea that it's only one left, but it's been great. And this was a really great episode. And I hope you guys enjoyed watching along with me. I talked a lot again, sorry about that. But if you are still here, thank you so much for making it through this review with me. I hope you liked watching with me. Please show some love if you did. And I will see you in the next episode.